وهؤلاء ناتي بكتب السلف ناتي بالقران ناتي بالسنه ناتي بكتب البخاري ومسلم وابو داود والترمذي والنسائي وما الفه احمد وما الفه غيره ناتي بها ومن هو على طريق هؤلاء ومن ينافذهم ويخالفهم سيدنا القيم منشنز وامتحن الرجل بامراته وامراته به and he said and likewise a man is tested with his wife and she is tested with her husband and and that is the reality of the affair that from the trials of the dunya is those trials that manifest at the hands of one's wife and no doubt ikhwan You see some of the brothers smiling. The reality of the affair, ikhwan, is that one's wife can be a fitna. And one should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah has blessed him with a wife that is not a fitna. For indeed that is no doubt from the blessings of the dunya. Similarly, one's husband can be a trial and a fitna for a woman. to the extent that her day and her night is spent ikhwan worrying and reflecting and pondering over this trial and this fitna of a husband that she has that is the reality ikhwan of the dunya but no doubt ikhwan that was something that we saw manifest even at the time and even with the companions of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if that was something that was going to manifest with them He goes without saying ikhwan that it is going to manifest with us. And there were times of difficulty that they faced, hardship. And ikhwan subhanallah from the women of the sahaba, we have those women ikhwan who under, under, underwent or yani were placed under trial by way of their husbands. or that they were individuals ikhwan who were patient with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them even though they were not given much in that regard ikhwan there are one or two narrations and we will we'll finish with those narrations from them we have the narration ikhwan of Asma bint Abi Bakr and reflect ikhwan the daughter of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiyallahu anhu Asma binti Abu Bakr binti Abi Bakr radiyallahu anha mentioned tazawwajani and in that uh, Abu Bakr married me to Az-Zubair wa malahu fi al-ard min mal wa la mamluk He said that I was married to Zubair and Zubair did not possess in the earth any wealth yani he was poor neither did he possess any or neither did he have any possession and he was poor destitute and he didn't possess anything other than a camel and other than a horse so abu bakr ikhwan married his daughter to az zubair and zubair was an individual who was poor didn't possess anything other than a camel and a horse now subhanallah it is a condition for us ikhwan to marry our daughters to individuals with degrees and individuals involved in real estate and individuals ikhwan who are able to pay that 10000 pound mahar or 5000 pound mahar or whatever else look at abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu married his daughter ikhwan to an individual who had nothing but a camel and a horse but look at asma radiyallahu anha she mentions and i used to spend time with the horse feeding it and she mentioned walam yakun shay'un ashadda alayya min siyasati al-faras there was nothing that was harsher upon me and dealing with and taking care of and looking after that horse she mentioned wa kuntu ahushu lahu wa aqumu alayhi wa asqi al-ma wa asqihi al-ma 
And she, he, she meant, وَأُخَيَّتُ uh, 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 دَلْوَى دَلْوَى She mentioned that I used to establish, I used to, used to look at it after it. And I used to mow grass for it. Yeah, so it may eat. And I used to pour it water. And I used to sew its leather skin, yeah, the bag that it would drink water and eat food from. She mentioned, even though that was the only thing that he possessed, it was not, there was nothing harsher for me than looking after this horse of my husband. So she didn't say, subhanAllah, yani, what have you given me? You haven't given me anything and you want me to do all this work and you want me to... She said, subhanAllah, there was nothing that was harsher for me than looking after the horse. But she did it. She looked after the horse and on top of that, she mentioned, and I used to likewise, ajin. I used to make dough and I used to cook. And she mentioned, وَلَمْ أَكُنْ أَحْسِنُ, أحسن أَخْبَزْ He mentioned, but and I, didn't, I wasn't good at, at cooking bread. He said, I used to make dough, but I, I, even though I was not good uh, at doing so. Similarly, ikhwan, we have the hadith and the statement of Fatima. Never mind the daughter of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Fatima, the daughter of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fatima radiallahu anha mentioned, ikhwan, that the messenger after uh, describing the fact that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married her to Ali radiallahu anhu, she mentioned that she used to spend time, the daughter of the messenger of Allah, walking with the mill, yani milling, and grinding seed yani to make flour. حتى أثرت الرحاء بيدها to the extent that the grill or the mill made a mark in her hand. And she used to mill and spend time doing so until it affected and marked her hands. She didn't say, subhanAllah, this is too much for me. Or whatever you ever done for me. And I'm doing all this work for you and I don't receive anything back. Huh? Rather, she said, I used to do it, even though it made a mark in my hands. And she mentioned that she used to likewise go and fetch water with the qurba, yani with the water skin that used, they used to hang over their necks. Hatta afarat al-qurba bin hariha. Until the water skin made a mark in her neck. Yani you could see it, was, it marked her neck. And it, from the amount of time that she used to go and get water with the water skin, she, she didn't say, yani, this is a man's job, it's not a woman's job. This is what you should be doing, not what, I'm, not what I should be doing. But she continued to do it to the extent, Ikhwan, that the water skin marked her neck. The, the daughter of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she mentioned, and I used to work in the house to the extent that my clothes became tatters, and my garments became worn out. And she mentioned, and I used to cook until the, to the extent that my garment or my thiab became, yeah, and he, or it became, uh, 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 it was harmed by the pot, yeah, and by the cooking pot, and by her being over the fire. So concerning that, she, she approached the Messenger of Allah for something from help, Ikhwan, and that she should uh, have a khadima or one that helps her or a maid in the house. When she approached the Messenger of Allah وسلم, for that, after the mill had made that mark in her hand, and after the water skin made that mark on her neck, and after her, her clothes and her garments became tatters, and were affected by the work that she used to do in her house, what was the response of the messenger to her request? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Subhanallah, you're doing all this work, and, and your husband, Subhanallah. What was the, the response of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ala ukhbiruki ma huwa khayrun laki minhu. Should I not inform you of that which is better for it or for you than it? And then, 
a maid, and a hand in the house, should I not inform you of that which is better than it? He mentioned that when you go to sleep or when you approach your bed to sleep, say subhanallah 33 times. And say alhamdulillah, say alhamdulillah 33 times. And make takbir 33 times. Better for you than the khadima. And when you go to sleep, that you should say 33 times, subhanallah. 33 times, alhamdulillah. And 33 times, Allahu Akbar. Knowing, ikhwan, that the reality of the dunya is that the dunya is a trial and a test. And that which a person, ikhwan, receives from khair in the dunya is that which he establishes from the affairs that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the dhikr of Allah azza wa jal, like the tasbih, like the takbir, and like the tahmeed. So ikhwan, when we realize and recognize that the dunya is a test and a trial, then we're pleased, ikhwan, with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. We're pleased with that which Allah has written for us from wealth, and the fact that Allah has kept us firm upon the deen for indeed, it may be that Allah opens for us, ikhwan, by giving us wealth. If we continue to ask for it, for an increase in it, it may be, ikhwan, that that may be an opening or may be opening the door of our destruction. And as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, as occurs in the hadith of Fudala ibn Ubaid, طُوبَى لِمَنْ هُدِيَ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَكَانَ عَيْشُهُ كَفَّافًا وَقَنَّعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا آتَى Mr. Sallallahu said, Good tidings, glad tidings to the one who was guided to Al-Islam. Glad tidings to the one who was guided to Al-Islam. وَكَانَ عَيْشُهُ كَفَّافًا And his عيش, or that which he receives from sustenance, is sufficient. And then, Ikhwan, the Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, the key, Ikhwan, to our success, وَقَنَّعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا آتَى and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him satisfied with that which he has given him. And that no doubt, ikhwan, is the key, ikhwan, to our success as it relates to the affairs of the dunya. That we're pleased with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us and given us. And that we're satisfied with that, ikhwan. And we do not seek after that which may be a fitna for us and a trial for us. Uh, and that which may bring us and take us away from this blessed deed.